big screens, high resolution, colors so real you'll never want to leave your room. There are plenty of ways that stores will try to sell you a monitor, but there's one key spec that you might not hear much about, which is response time, which can make a difference when there's some kind of fast action happening on the screen. Oh, so you're talking about that thing where there's a delay between pressing a key and clicking a mouse or whatever and then having it display on the screen, right? Actually, no, that's called input lag, which is also important since too much input lag can leave you frustrated at best or lying in a pool of virtual blood at worst because you couldn't react quickly enough to an opponent. Response time, however, is less about how your monitor will eventually display inputs from your peripherals after a delay and more about the individual pixels themselves. It's a measure of how quickly a pixel can display a change from black to white or from one shade of gray to another. Different shades of gray represent how intense any given color will appear on your monitor through a filter. The darker the gray, the less light will pass through said color filter and hit your eyes. Which is why you don't hear people talking about red to blue response times or anything like that. Response times are usually given in milliseconds since one frame on a standard 60 hertz monitor stays on your screen for just under 17 milliseconds. The pixels themselves need to transition more quickly than that so they can display the next frame on time. But just because a monitor has a response time under 17 milliseconds doesn't mean that it's just as good as anything else. Longer response times often result in ghosting, which means you can see the remains of trails from a moving object on the screen because pixels took too long to switch between shades of gray. This might not be a huge deal if you just use your computer as a Facebook machine, but if you're a gamer or like to watch movies with fast action, poor response times can cause really distracting visual artifacts. So how do you know what's actually good when looking to buy a monitor, checking out their specs and whatnot. People have different opinions on what the maximum response time should be if you're gaming. While some people claim that they can't notice any ghosting on anything below 8 milliseconds, there's other people like competitive gamers who swear by super quick screens with response times of only 1 or 2 milliseconds. Typically TN panels can be engineered to be quicker than their IPS counterparts, so you'll often see higher end TN displays marketed as being for gamers. But remember that you'll also lose color accuracy and viewing angles. But hold on, take whatever the manufacturer puts on the spec sheet with a huge grain of salt. There isn't a standardized way for these companies to measure response times, so you might be seeing a cherry-picked measurement for how long it takes for a pixel to switch between two similar shades of gray and end up disappointed with the actual performance once you hook it up. Fortunately, this is a situation where a little research can go a long way. There are websites that have independently conducted measurements of response times as well as input lag times so you can have a more apples to apples comparison when you're shopping. And remember to check reviews from a trusted source as well. Even if a monitor says that it has lightning quick response time of one to two milliseconds, many people complaining about ghosting could be a clue that what's on the spec sheet isn't all that accurate. So so pay attention the next time you've been marketed for a new display. Even the biggest, highest resolution screen you can get your paws on will be very disappointing if it makes everything look like a giant ice cream smear. Know what isn't disappointing? Lynda.com. With a Lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts who are passionate about teaching. And they stream thousands of video courses on demand. You can learn whatever the heck you want on your own schedule at your own pace, which is awesome. You can browse each course's transcript. So say you're watching a video, kind of like this one, but I said something and you had to try to find it again and it was frustrating. On Lynda.com, you could see the script for the whole video and then just jump to that exact part of the video, which is kind of great. You can take notes as you go and refer to them later on. You can download tutorials to watch them on the go, so you're going on a train or something where you lose Wi-Fi connection or whatever. You can access them on your iOS or Android devices. You can create and save playlists or courses that you can watch and check out at any time. You can even compare learning paths to go along with your friends and colleagues. So yeah, it's great. Your Lynda.com membership will give you unlimited access to training on tons of courses with all a flat rate of $25 per month. So whether you're looking to become an industry expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, go to Lynda.com slash TechCookie and sign up for a free 10-day trial. Did you like the video? Like it. Did you dislike the video? Dislike it. Both are fine. Just, you know what? Do what's in your heart. I, I believe it will be the right thing whatever it happens to be. Also, another right thing to do, check out TechWiki. I mean, Channel Superfun, which is probably on my face now. This was TechWiki.
Go to the other one. That one's cool. That one's a little bit more fun and entertaining than TechWiki is kind of like not quite as fun but more educational. I think they like contrast quite well. So watching one after the other and then coming back here might be a good idea if you just bounce back and forth between the two. There you go. Viewing options. Anyways, don't forget to subscribe. Bye.